connect, serve and grow is what you can expect at the House of Reconciliation. Leadership, community, education, wellness and participation is part of our plan for your spiritual growth and success. Family and faith is a core value for the House of Reconciliation. Working to help people find their purpose. Want to make an impact in the kingdom? Ready to tap into your future? Meet us at the House Sundays with Pastor Reginald Campbell. www.houseofreconciliation.org Thank you and welcome you in to another edition of Successful Living. We are here at the House of Reconciliation Greenville Campus. Want to say again, we are thankful for the I Am Church, their leadership, Bishop Jeff Akers, and to the church family for allowing us to be here again in 2022. Yes, it is a new year. I'm gonna ask you a question as we begin this journey. How's it going so far with your New Year's resolution? We talked about the great hangover. We talked about still hung up on your past, living among the dead. We kinda got to another point, the almost group. That's where we are now, the almost group. We spoke last evening, we were at the Greenwood campus, wanna welcome you in, also to those that are part of our virtual campus, and to our guests, and to our global partners. Please never hesitate to go join our YouTube channel, houseofreconciliation.org, as well as go to houseofreconciliation.org and be a part of our virtual campus. We thank you for your time and how that you supported the ministry throughout 2021, and now we're entering 2022. So now we want to talk this evening, we talked about the almost group. There's another face of the almost group, identifying your next move. And when I thought about that and did a little research, I wanna talk to you this evening about avoiding the traps. And many people feel like they don't have traps, but I'm gonna give you two scriptures. Proverbs 11 and one talks about a false balance as an abomination unto God. I want you to look at 1 Peter 5, and eight and it talks about the adversary and the deceit that the adversary chooses to use and create pitfalls for the believer so right off the bat i want to give you this we more must abort people and things that continue to put us in traps you need to write that one we must abort them you can no longer sidestep them because if you sidestep them, they're still there. We must abort people and things, behaviors that continue to put us in traps. These traps hinder our growth, our opportunity, and they steal time from us. One of the things I want you to, to write if you're writing, there are three major things that you and I have to look at. One is we have to stop thinking like a grasshopper the grasshopper thinking is simple i can't do it i want to do it but i'm not prepared to do it and i'm afraid to do it and what happens if i fail we cannot come from 2019 2020 2021 going into 2022 and have all these dreams and all these aspirations and all these things of woulda coulda shoulda we have to now buckle in because we're in the middle of the month and I will break down at some point the definition of 2022. So here's the thing, the grasshopper thinking. So now we're, what's the day? We're at the 19th of the month. I want you to revisit in your mind, have you started and are you consistent with one thing on your plan? Every individual needs to have a plan for his or her life, not only for your life, but also for your children. If you're the age of 13 or 14, yes, it's wonderful to have all the video games in the world, but you need to start thinking about your future. You have to start thinking now about your future. If you have grandkids, and oh man, there's a story, and I mentioned uh, that they should write a book, how a young lady was sitting with her grandfather and she had graduated high school. And after all that she had been through and all that she had done, he looked her in the face and said, I don't have anything to send you to school with. So I look at parents today with all of these wonderful children that we have, what plan do you have for yourself? If there's no plan for you, and let me help you out, if your plan is wrapped around a job, 
what you think is a career, then you really don't have a plan. Because if that job ends or that career is no longer in demand, what options do you have? This is why now we talk about avoiding the traps. Because your time is valuable. And here's one of the other things. Most people don't value their own time. And things steal time. And we occupy our time that we should be self-investing and building ourselves. We occupy that. I don't know what you want to call it with. But here's the other thing. You can't be in 2022 and say that you have new resolutions and still have an old mindset and an old behavior. So grasshopper thinking. What is it that you would like to do, but you've not taken the time to sit down and study to do? What have you not gathered the ingredients to do? And I say this again. If you can answer every issue in your life through your feelings and emotions, it is not the information of change that you need. For to grow and to hit that next level, you're going to have to invest in your intellect and intelligence. You're going to have to seek God for spiritual insight and pray for spiritual foresight. Because many people today are just functioning, oh, I got a house, oh, I got a car, oh, I got a job, oh, I got a companion. And so if all of that change, all of that can change in one moment. What do we do? How positioned are we? What happens? Have you looked beyond your old behaviors and your feelings and emotion? The second part is our temperament. Knee-jerk reactions to everything. Our mouths will generally run before our brain ever gets to notice. And so what happens is my emotions because it's feeding off of my past, it's feeding off of my brokenness, it's feeding off of my, off of my emptiness, it's feeding off of all the drummer that I allow myself to digest. And so then when a life event comes along, or even when an opportunity comes along, I don't have a qualified answer. I just have a knee-jerk response. And once it's out there, it is very hard to try to fish that back in. So the question becomes, I want you to, there's a couple things, I think it's about three that I'm going to give you. But the first one is, first of all, know and understand that you have an adversary. The Bible says it. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So one of the things that we got to do is if you expect to be a butterfly, you got to stay away from grasshoppers. If you have the ability to choose and to have the cogniz uh, consciousness to be able to do certain things in life, then why do you still associate with people who don't plan to go anywhere? They just wake up every day with the same theory. Whatever happens, happens, player. I'm about that life. And then it's true, only 4% of people have a vision for their life. 4%. Now, here's why I'm saying this. If you don't get this, and we get over into February, into March, and you think you can fly, you can't fly when you're still crawling. And be careful who you get in your circle when you're crawling. Because what happens with people who are crawling, somebody find a way to fly. And if you're not the one in transition, you're not the one evolving, you're not the one gathering new information. What happens when your friend flies and you're still crawling? What happens when you begin to fly and your train of thought goes completely a different way? What happens? What happens? What happens? What happens? When all of a sudden, the guy that you're hanging out with, he doesn't hang out with you anymore. He's going to college. The person that you hung out with down the street. 
And now they're moving to a new community. Friction. Every person in life is going to get a sandpaper rub. And either your position to take the next step in life, and I'm going to say this right off the bat, if you don't listen, then you'll be stepped on in 2022. There will be people who will step on you, and there will be people that will step over you because we have not positioned ourselves. Because somehow the adversary makes you think that things are okay. That's what the adversary does. The adversary, and you should write this, the adversary never takes a day off. Even if you're not under attack, the adversary never takes a day off. So some people only function when they're under pressure. This is why I talk about avoid the traps. Because some people's mind never kicks in until they got a problem. And now they know all the laws. They know all the rules. What happened before the incident? incident? Where was your mind? Where was your focus? Where was your behavior? In fact, what are your goals today? Can you look on your calendar? Can you look on your smartphone? Can you say, I've done the five things that I was supposed to do today? Are your emotions and feelings still in charge? Because when you and I are operating out of our emotion and feel, feelings, when something new comes along, we shut down. We resist learning. And you can't work at the nev next level if you're inconsistent at the level you're on now. Me or you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So what happens is the adversary is never going to take a day off. Even if you're not under attack. Even if you don't like pressure. Here's what happens, and we don't get this. One of the biggest tricks of the adversary, the adversary is trying to destroy our lives by making us think it doesn't exist. First Peter, I believe it was first, what, first Peter 5 and 8. You, you're still loading? Okay, you still got an issue. Okay. First Peter 5 and 8, just read that in your hearing because the enemy doesn't take a day off. Just because you're not under attack, just because you don't feel pressure, it doesn't mean that the enemy is not plotting on you. And so one of the easiest traps is to get you to look at people rather than learn the deception of the enemy. So here's the thing. The adversary is trying to destroy our lives by making us think he doesn't exist. When he's silent, when he is silent, he's working behind the scenes to change his cloak. Kind of goes back to the slide of the wolf. He'll sit there, and, and most predators, how they attack people, most predators will swim. Sharks will swim among their prey. Lions and hyenas will lay out with the antelope and never attack them. The enemy sits there and make you think he has no interest in the world of attacking you. Orcas do the same thing. They swim along. They talk about sharks. Sharks swim around the reef all day. They never attack anything, anybody. They be hungry and starving. They're patient. Predators are patient. And at nighttime, that's when it becomes a frenzy, a, a feeding frenzy. So when you don't have any pressure, and you think you've got all these accolades, you must understand it's critical in 2022 to avoid the pitfalls, to avoid the traps. And what happens? What happens? He fools us to think that all is well. You think people that you no longer associate with, you think people who left the company, or whatever the case may be, they don't have a vendetta against you?
Yes. Well, the easiest thing to do is divide and conquer. Now, let me, t- let me explain it to you. Well, 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 what do you mean? Uh, h- how does this relate? He fools you to think that all is well and that you're not under attack. But here's what really happens. The adversary creates new ways to trap us. And here's the thing that he does. He divides us from prayer. He divides us from fasting. Those things does not feed the natural body. There's no nutrition for the body outside of maybe a level of detoxification. Because we love sugar and starch. We're carnivores. We're meat eaters. And so how the enemy does is he just flows right along with us. That all is well and we're getting a good meal and we're feeling it. And so then we feel so comfortable, we don't pray anymore. He makes us feel like we don't need God anymore. Many people right now, there are probably more people fasting this month that have fasted in the last three years because of all the things that are going on. So do we really fast because that is the relationship with God? Or are we fasting because we want the pandemic to be over so we can go back to doing us? And, and many people after January, after the 7, 12, 21, 26-day fast, they're not going to fast the rest of the year. And they wonder why they're under attack. Your first attack is always spiritual. Your first attack is always in your mind. And so we can pray to God. You can sing. You can dance. You can shout. You can't shout Satan away from you. You have to keep the enemy at bay. So what happens is what he does is he creates new ways to trap us. I don't, I don't need to pray. I don't need to go by service. I mean, you know, I, I have social media. I thank God that we do have the technology we have. We have an abundance of snow in our area on on Sunday, so a lot of places were not open for worship, but some people still found their way to go to work. Some people still found their way to go to the store. And some people were still at the club. Because it feeds the natural man, and it stalls the spiritual man. So what happens is, The enemy swims along with us. He knows he can trap us because when we don't keep our attention on God and we avoid early morning prayer, we avoid fasting one or two days a week, we avoid noonday reading the scripture, we avoid communing with God. And then all of a sudden, we can't find God when we think God can't find us. So what the enemy does, for those that are writing, he gets us to drift away from the spiritual principles that God has laid out for us. One of the greatest challenges of most churches now is getting people to come back to church. Because truly, everybody thinks they can just have, oh, I can go online, yes, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, oh, okay, Jesus. And we can watch drama series, series all day. Football all day. Know every play that they ran. We can coach the team and they can't even coach a peewee league all day. But when it comes to building that spiritual life with God, my mind's too busy. Yes. Because that's what the enemy does. So, so then when we have to face these things, See, it's one thing to watch drama. It's another thing to be in drama. And and so what Satan does to us is once he gets us off and under the unction and the spirit, we get weak because we're not focused. So now, what's the scripture? The enemy begins to sift. He plays a violin. He begins to sift. 
and he starts to loosen every string that was tightened by God. Every principle that God laid out in your life, everything that God done for you, he finds a way to minimize it in your mind. So now, guess what happens? The sharks and the orcas and the bears and the lions are a lot closer. See, because they can't attack you unless they can ambush you. And so where you had the spirit of God that was a barometer around you, it was a shield, it was a hedge around you. So how he, how he trickles in us is he starts feeding us with drama. Then from drama, jealousy. Who they think they are? They think they are all that. Jealousy comes in. And from jealousy, envy. Envy. I envy my brother's success. I envy my brother. Come on, Jacob and Esau. Division. Divide and conquer. Adam and Eve. They could have said, you know what? And, and notice they were together till God showed up. They were both finding something to cover up. But when the Lord began to show up, it's your fault. It's your fault. It's you did this. She gave it to her fault. And the serpent didn't have anybody to blame it on. He just said, that dog, yeah, he played with me. He sifts. This is a moment for whatever your leader is telling you, you should, you should make it a principle in your life. It should become the, the ten spiritual commandments that I'm going to follow every day. So, drama, jealousy, envy. Now, guess what comes into play? Self-destruction. See, nobody pays attention to the crack in the wall. There's cracks in the wall, everybody. And no one's paying attention. And the crack could be sealed up with faith. Crack in the wall could be filled up with silicone. But because I have now believed that God needs to adjust to me rather than I adjust to God, I have a huge crack in the wall. And that's how self-destruction comes in. And right after self-destruction becomes self-inflicted behavior. And when any of you and I start not believing in the inherited gifts that God has given you, the first thing comes in is doubt. And after doubt, negativity so doubt comes in because there's a crack there's a crack you, you're not praying you're not fasting you, you don't need to go to church some people even went to work in the snow been going to work in the pandemic but somehow some way oh my goodness i just i i just don't have time to go to church and so a false narrative is to say you know i'm a child of god you may be but are you acting like a child of God? If you never put any money in that bank account, how can you draw some off of it? If you never come in and worship God at some point, five, seven, ten minutes, and it, it don't have to be great. It don't have to be long. If, if God were to pull your record right now, he doesn't need an attorney because he's judge, jury, and all. You would need an attorney to give all the excuses to why you've not made any moves in your life. And so the enemy, the adversary, he gets in once we start self-destruction because when we forget to pray, when we forget to thank God, when we forget to worship God, that's self-destruction. Paul said we're dual beings. He said there's a war going on in my members. There's a spiritual side to us. And many of us are full. But our spiritual man is in a state of anorexia. Malnutrition. Because we don't see the value of prayer. We don't see the value of attending service. Oh, that's what people in need do. Oh, that's right. I don't need to attend, you know. I, I got my own way. Oh, I got enough. Hmm. But when doubt comes in, 
after self-inflicted behavior, then fear sets in. Here's the thing that the enemy does. The enemy retreats again to create new plans to defeat you. So just while we're, we're talking and looking at the almost group and living among the dead, we got to understand, to identify our next move, to avoid these traps, we got to do something different. We got to quit thinking like a grasshopper. We've got to change old behaviors. And I, and I say this again. If you're crawling today, this is not the time to get a relationship. This is not a time, oh, we are the same. Because when one grows, one will catch wings and the other will still be crawling. Then you've tied and tangled up yourself with a job. And so where if you would have waited and been patient, you could, you could have received the job that was at your level. But because you got the mind of a grasshopper, you don't see investing in yourself. You don't see extending your education. You don't see that I need spiritual angels to, to warfare and, and I'm going to set my record right with God. I'm going to look internally and quit blaming people externally. I'm going to stop living and seeking and have an appetite for drama. Because you can put something out there negative, it'll go viral in a minute. But if you put something out there that's talking about changing lives and building a better you, very little traction. Because some people believe that the struggle is real. And other people believe that the struggle is a step. It's not my final destination. So as I close, our faith will always be tested. Why? There are multiple levels in God. And we cannot achieve these levels without faith. And even in the midst of another variance, we have to still do some things to show God. If you want your lights to stay on, you might want to pay something on the bill. I mean, am I? Because woulda, coulda, shoulda. It's not going to happen. So in my closing, Let's get and stay focused. This is the 19th of the month of January. Many resolutions will put out there. Where are you, where are you at with your resolution? And was there, was there a resolution and a commitment to follow God? So here's what I say to you. You don't want to be in the almost group. You don't want to wait till later. What you want to do? Study, prep for what gifts God has given you. And study and learn how long it's going to take. It took Moses 80 years to get ready to serve. Don't waste your time on things that don't have time for you. Because everything around you in 2022 should be building you. Ask me why. So it prepares you, my brothers and sisters, to the Greenwood campus and the Greenville campus and to our virtual campus to our guests and friends. You got to have something in you for God to stretch you. Because you can't ask God for all the things 
that he could give you and bless you with. And you have no room to fit him. God bless you. I'll see you soon.